Hey everyone, so welcome back. Today we're gonna to talk about back-end SEO. And so what that is, is basically, you know, I'm sure you've heard of doing keyword research for your actual blog post, but there's actually some SEO you need to do on your actual website before you even begin producing content such as blog posts and so forth. So let's hop on over here. Um, let me extend this out just a little bit so we can get the whole screen in here. Okay, so the first thing you wanna make sure that you have is the Yoast um, SEO plugin. And so it's gonna be really important um, that you have that set up um, because that is gonna, is how you will actually enter the information and have it inserted into kind of, you know, the coding of your website so that the search engine crawlers can detect and pick up kind of what your overall blog's purpose is. Um, another thing is, so I'm just going to show you here, when you type in your actual blog's name, like not the URL, but the, like what your name is. So for us, it's Kingdom Bloggers. You want it to show, like specifically say what you want um, readers to know if your blog came up in a search result and so you want it to display properly here and then also the actual description um, the snippet that comes up you want to be very intentional with what actually it says there um, of course having your name for one but then also just a general summary using very specific keywords that kind of summarize what your site's overall purpose is and then beyond the actual landing page um, any of your other administrative pages like um, your about page or if you have a contact page or anything like that, you want those to come up as well, followed by um, any of your uh, social channels. So, you know, we have Pinterest here um, and if we scroll down even further, you would see our Facebook and so forth. So how do we make that happen? Okay, so we're going to go over here um, into the Yoast a little thing here on the sidebar and we're just going to kind of go through um, each of these tabs you can see what goes in here so from this page there's not really going to be much that you're going to go um, on the general page so we want to go down here to search appearance and so from here first off you want to fill this section out here um, you can upload a logo that will come up um, when your site, it's kind of, if you don't have an image for that page, this one will be the default. And then of course the name. And then here you're gonna see, and, and I just wanna pause real quick. So depending on your theme, every theme is set up differently as far as what the, um, like how it's defaulted for, if it's a static page, if it's your blog feed, um, and also, of course, you can adjust that as well based on how you want your site to display when people land on it. So yours might not actually have exactly what I have right here. Um, and so basically what you'll want to find, normally it's set up as a default page, like the format of a page in your pages section that would be either the blog setting, if that's what you have as your homepage feed, or if you had an actual homepage feed. So here on this, on Kingdom Bloggers, we actually have one of each, depending on which one we want to use. So we actually did the SEO for both of them. So I'm just gonna kind of right click on both of these. And what it's gonna do is take me to a page that's already pre-formatted. So this is our homepage. As you can see here, it's just king, bloggersforthekingdom.com. Now there's nothing in this, but you can see when we do a preview, this is, our landing page for the site and so this is all coded into that page and so you don't actually write content on it. I mean you can but this is just pre-formatted and so what we want to do is for each of your administrative pages so your home page um, we have one here for the blog feed same thing is you want to go down to the bottom to your Yoast box so I know if you've done any of our other training on um, filling out the Yoast box for your actual blog post, you're going to want to do the same thing for these administrative pages. And so don't worry about getting the green lights for any of this. Um, this is simply an administrative function. So whatever your key phrase that you kind of want to be known as, for us it's Christian bloggers. And then you'll come up here. And so by default, you're going to have kind of some 
it's not going to have like how it looks here. There's the little placeholders. So you want to change this to exactly what you want it to show in the search, like how you want it to show up here, like we showed you just a second ago. I think I had it here. There we go. Um, and so you'll enter that, you know, a longer one is better, kind of, you know, a tagline or whatever. And then you want to enter a really good key, with, key rich meta description, including your blog's name. So Kingdom Bloggers is a place for Christian bloggers was a, a keyword that we wanted to use. Christian writers, um, the art of blogging. Those were some key phrases for us to use in our snippet. And so you see that right here and each of these has its own as well they're almost the same but we kind of tailored them a little different depending on if it was the blog page or the about page um, but either way you'll want to fill this in and put your little key phrase in here and then simply save that and so now when um, someone types in your blog's name like not Sometimes people don't remember the URL when you're like, yeah, just go to bloggersforthekingdom.com. But if I say, hey, just search Kingdom Bloggers on Google, then when they search it, this is exactly what's going to come up. And we do the same thing over here. Um, we changed it up just a little bit. Um, Christian Bloggers was the focus keyword on this one. And so, but these, the, the descriptions are kind of basically the same, almost verbatim. And so you'll save those. And so that's the first step in doing the back end SEO. Okay, so let's close these out here. All right, so now we're here in search appearance. So you definitely want to go into for your social. Make sure you enter the information for all of your social channels. Enter them all in here. Uh, for Twitter, it's just the handle, not the full URL. And so you'll want to save those. And then in each of these, there's some things. Um, if you have an app ID, you can put that in there. If you want the image, that thumbnail that shows up when you share it on, uh, share your blog's URL on Facebook, like not a blog post, but the actual just your blog, you can change that image by uploading something different here. Um, same thing with Pinterest and Twitter. Um, so you can do your Pinterest confirmation here. Um, I don't actually uh, recommend doing it this way. Um, we have another video that shows you how to validate your site with Pinterest um, and Google Plus. I don't know why they haven't removed this from the, the dashboard here because that's not an active platform anymore. Um, but definitely make sure all of your social channels are in here. And you can kind of look through some of these other ones just to see um, what is in them. Your search console is a, another part that we're going to do here in a minute. So this is where if you have any 404 errors. So this is where if you've published something and then maybe deleted it, um, then it'll just have a 404 error here. You, you want to be careful with those, but these aren't like detrimental to your site or anything. Okay. So now that we have the back end side done. And so again, let me just show you really quick. So again, your blog's URL, the actual just um, yourdomain.com, that's one. And then if you have a separate blog feed, so it's yourdomain.com backslash blog or whatever you have, but then also any of your other administrative pages. So we have our about page, affiliate disclosure, um, what else do we have? An archive. There's our blog page. If you have like WooCommerce or some other kind of shoppable page, you'll, you'll enter it for the details on that, your contact page and so forth. So there's our home page. So again, anything that's a pre-formatted page, um, basically rule of thumb, if it's something that has been published, which any page, you know, you can create resource pages, you can create all sorts of things from the page template but primarily you'll use them for your administrative functions. Make sure you fill out that Yoast box for every single one of them. In your meta description for them, ensure your blog's name and those key words that you want associated with your site are in that meta description. Okay, so the next part will be actually creating a sitemap and submitting that sitemap to Google Webmaster Tools so it can be indexed. So if you're not sure what all that means, so think about back in the day when we actually had phone books before we had cell phones and all of that. So you have a phone number, but if it wasn't in the actual phone book, the only way people could find you or call you was that you actually physically handed them your phone number. 
as a blogger, well, that is one method, word of mouth. Here's my card or here's my blog. Why don't you go check it out? But ultimately, we want to be found organically through search engines. So if we have an unlisted number, no one's ever going to find us that way. Or your page will eventually get crawled, but it'll take much longer and your content won't be indexed properly. And so how we do that, we come back over here to the SEO, the, the main one, general. And in features, you know, click on that. You want to come down here to, and so this part, this step, you don't want to do this until you've fully done the SEO for all of the other stuff, okay? So now we're actually going to basically put your phone number in the book. I guess that's the best correlation I can come up with. So you're going to click on the little question mark here, and then you're going to see XML sitemap. And so when that comes up, it's going to show you all of the sitemaps for your site. Now, you may not use all of these. Um, so depending on, you know, especially if you're just getting started and you haven't quite produced some content yet. So Kingdom Bloggers actually had one on here. It's not on here now, but it was for testimonials. Um, so I didn't submit that sitemap because we don't actually have those on our site. So you only want to submit your post, your page. Um, categories you may have some other different ones depending on your theme and how it's laid out if you have a shoppable page um, you have WooCommerce you'll have one for that and so forth so how do you submit them all right so we're going to come over here to Google Webmaster Tools going to sign in here okay so from here you're going to go to and of course I'm already logged in, so you'll need to create an account if you haven't done that. You'll go to Sitemap, and so by default, your actual regular domain will already be right here. And so you are simply going to copy this last part after the backslash, and you will put it there and hit Submit. Now, I've already done it. Um, so I'm not going to do it again, but you'll hit submit and then it'll put it down here and it hopefully will say success. And then you'll go and you'll do it for each one of these, copy and paste each one of these one at a time. And so you can see here, these are all of our sitemaps that have been submitted. And so now the actual sitemap. So a sitemap is basically a map of your site that includes all of your content that act, is actually published. And so this gives the crawler somewhat of a, a guide, a map, for them to go out and crawl your page to determine your content, give you kind of some SEO credibility, and rank you so that when people do search certain keywords in the Google search query, um, that it will have indexed your site in a way that it's like, oh, this person is looking for this. Let me go pull that file. And then that's how your blog and its content will begin showing up in those search results. Okay, so from here, so once you've submitted your site, um, it could take three or more weeks for it to actually be fully crawled. Um, so don't submit it today and think, you know, in a week, why am I not being found? And when I say not being found, so the best way to figure it out is come over here and type your blog's name, the, the way it should be displayed, not like um, some people put it all together as one word like this. No, the way you want it to actually be displayed and hit enter. And so once you've been fully indexed, here should be the first one. Now, this may vary if you have like a really common name or you've chosen a name for your blog that might be competing with a popular book or something else along those lines. So always be mindful of that when you're choosing the name for your website. Um, but this could take several weeks to actually get fully um, indexed in the Google um, you know, indexing system. And so another thing, if you know, after you've done this, and let's say later on in the year, you're like, you know what, I need to redirect my domain, my, my web address, I just don't like it, um, or it's not working, or it's just not reflecting what my site is about, or maybe you just want to change something major on your site when it comes to the name, the, the actual domain, um, or something like that. If that happens, then you simply create a new sitemap after all the changes have been made, 
and then come over here and resubmit them all again. Now you don't want to do this like every month because then it could Google could be like, hey, what's going on here? Um, but we've had you know people recently, some of our members have chosen a completely new domain name um, for whatever reason and then rebranded their entire site and so they redirected the old URL to the new one and so now you need to submit the sitemap for the new domain that way the Google crawlers can go out and search it and so it's that simple um, you know if you don't do this it will take your site much longer to get found in search results um, but this is an important step that's so often overlooked but it is so important because again like I said before if your name's not in the phone book or your number's not in the phone book how is anyone going to find you so Google you know does crawl whatever's on on the internet so eventually they will find you but the, the pages on your site won't be properly indexed and it'll be much harder for you to get found in actual search queries. So um, I hope this made sense. Um, this again, backend SEO is so important. Um, I've spoken to so many bloggers over time um, that you know they're doing the SEO on their blog post, but they never did it on the back end of their website. And once you get this part done, and it's really important that you choose your keywords correctly, um, choose them intentionally. Like, what is the overall theme of your site? Pick one or two words or phrases that kind of res resonate with that, and then make sure those are consistently through every meta description on your administ administrative pages, including your blog's name. And that is how you will get more and more of these little ones that show up. So you have this and you have the about. Um, you can get the other ones to show up as well. So that's all. Um, stay tuned for the next segment, which is going to be doing keyword research for your actual blog posts, followed by how to actually format your blog post for SEO optimization.